Good morning and welcome to Online Sunday School, brought to you by Zion Lutheran Church in Landisville. I'm so glad that you're joining me today as we talk about the woman at the well. That is the name of our lesson for today. This lesson comes from the New Testament and is from John 4, verses 5 through 42. So, in today's story, as I mentioned, a woman meets a man at the well. Just in case you aren't sure what a well is, I have a picture here that I want to show you. This is the picture of a simple well. It's a place where water can be gotten from deep underground because under the ground there are springs with fresh water running below. In Jesus' day, going to the well was the way that families got water. They needed that water for everyday use, just like we go to the faucet and turn on the water when we need it today. But they didn't have plumbing and running water in their homes. Sometimes this was a very long walk to get to the well. Here's another example of what wells may have looked like back in Jesus' day. In fact, in some parts of the world, even today, people don't have running water and need to go to a well for their daily needs and then carry the heavy load back to their homes. So in our Bible story, we are reading about a woman who went on her job, and it usually was the woman's job, and she had to go a long distance and take her heavy jugs along. But one day when she got to the well, this Samaritan woman, as she was getting the water she needed for the day, a man that she didn't know walked up to her and started talking to her. Now she thought this was very unusual because she could tell that he was a Jew. And Jews didn't usually talk to Samaritans because of problems the peoples have had over many years. So when he asked her for a drink of water, she was also puzzled because he didn't have any vessel. He didn't have a cup or a jar or a bucket or anything to put the water in. So she's looking at him and she's thinking, you're asking me for water? but you don't have anything to carry it in. And the man must have felt that she was giving him kind of a hard time because he looked at her and he said, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for water. Well, this really took her back. She didn't understand what this meant. Now I have a little secret to share with you. This man wasn't just any man. You probably guessed it. This man was actually Jesus, the Messiah. He was passing through town along with others and had gotten very thirsty and had seen the well and the woman at the well. So she questioned him again that you're asking me for water, but I should be asking you for water. And he decided it was time for an explanation. He explained to her that the water in this well that she's getting her water from will quench her thirst at the time, but that she'll always need to come back because she will still be thirsty. We all know that, that we could take the biggest drink of something and perhaps three hours later or less, we are so thirsty again. That's how it is with earthly liquid water. But then this man, and now we know, but she doesn't, that this man is Jesus, he starts to explain to her that he's not talking about this water for the body. He's talking about water for the soul. And he's calling it living water. His explanation goes like this. Living water is water that you'll never feel thirsty again. Before I go on, let's talk for a moment. What do you think living water is before I go into what Jesus said? Now we know this man is Jesus, 
the Messiah. And he's telling this woman it's something she needs and that she'll never feel thirsty again. Hmm. Maybe living water is something that you only get by knowing God. Maybe it's a feeling. Maybe it's not really water at all. Well, the man went on to explain, and my guess came pretty close to what he said, because he said living water gives us new life. It gives us new life. He told her that the water that he's talking about means a relationship with God forever. By now the woman is finding out and guessing what we already know, that this is no ordinary man, that this man is Jesus. And she became so excited that she ran off to tell everyone she knew about the promise, the promise of living water, water for your soul, that's not actually water, like water in the well at all. So what we're learning here is that water is a part of our daily lives. Water such as comes out of our faucets and comes from wells. But our bodies can't live without that water or the water that Jesus is talking about when he describes living water. Our souls can't live without living water. Who do you go to when you feel all dried up? That would be like when you feel like you need help, when you feel like you need comfort, when you feel like nothing's working out and you can't go on. Who do you go to? Maybe it's your teacher. Maybe it's your mother or father or grandparents. Maybe it is the parent of one of your friends. The Bible lesson tells us that we should turn to Jesus because Jesus is like a well in that he is full of hope that will never run dry. With living water, there's always enough for everyone. There's enough for you, enough for me, enough for everyone. Okay, we're going to hear this now as a Bible story and I'm going to bring out my Sparks Bible. And I will show the pictures, and I have my friend here who's going to read it for you. Woman at the well, tired from walking a long way, Jesus rested at a well in a place called Samaria. His disciples went to get food while he rested. The sun was high in the sky. Whew. Jesus was hot. His tongue was as dry as a wad of sheep's wool. He was very thirsty. A Samaritan woman came to the well to get water. Will you give me a drink, Jesus asked. She gave him a puzzled look. Jesus was a Jew, and she knew that most Jews didn't like people from Samaria. Why are you asking me for a drink, she asked. If you knew who I was, Jesus answered, you would ask me for living water. Now the woman was really puzzled. Sir, she said as she pointed to the well. The well is deep and you don't have a jar. Where will you get this living water? Jesus smiled. Everyone who drinks from this well will be thirsty again. But the water I bring lasts forever. What the woman, woman didn't understand was that Jesus wasn't talking about water you drink. He was talking about living water. Love that forgives and life that lasts forever with God. As Jesus explained more, the woman became more and more interested. She wanted to hear more. So Jesus told her more, lots more. Jesus knew all about her, about where she came from, and what she believed. As they talked, the woman's eyes began to twinkle. I know the Messiah is coming, she said. I've heard all about him. Jesus smiled and put his hand on the woman's shoulder. I am the Messiah, he said gently. The woman was so surprised she nearly spilled her water jar. As the disciples came back with food, the woman rushed past them. 
She was so excited to tell everyone about what Jesus had said. The woman ran all over town, telling people about what she had seen and heard. There's a man at the well who says he's the Messiah. He has amazing things to say. Come and see him for yourself, she said. The people came running to see Jesus. Many people believed in Jesus because of what he told them that day. It's so interesting that Jesus uses water as his symbol for faith in God. Can you think of other stories in the Bible that water is important to the story? I thought of a few times that Jesus used water as a symbol. I first thought about the time that John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the waters of the Jordan River. We find this in Matthew 3, 13 to 7. There are still churches that baptize people by immersion into water. Here's a picture of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus in the water of the river. Water is used to re represent cleansing from sin. One of Jesus' first miracles was changing water into wine at a wedding. We find that in John 2, 1 to 25. Jesus walks on water, shows us again about having faith and believing. That's in John 6, 16 to 21. So we see that water is a very important symbol in, our, in the Bible. We say that Jesus is the living water. So Jesus used his conversation with the woman at the well to show us that water is an important symbol of our faith. What about water for us today? It's impossible for us to live without water. It's a very important part of life. As you go through your day, think about how many times in a day you use water or use a sink or a bathtub. We need water to live, and Jesus is teaching us that we also need water for our soul. So you can think also about how much we also need our faith to help us live our best life. I have an ending prayer. I'm not sure where I put it. Sorry. And our ending prayer today uses symbols just as God used and Jesus used the symbol of water for life and life in faith um, we have symbols that people who use sign language as part of their way of communicating so we'll show those symbols today the first symbol is Jesus Jesus uses your fingers to point to the area in the palm of your hand that symbolize when Jesus was crucified and how they drove nails through his hands to keep him on the cross. Another symbol that we use is love. And that's where we cross it, our, our hands over our heart. A symbol pointing away means you. I'm pointing to you. And water is a W and you take it from your mouth and show the water streaming. So let's put those together and we'll say, Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus into our world. We love you and we know that you love us too. Thank you for the living water of your love. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you uh, can 
have some discussions with your family about living water and our story today. And uh, you can also look up some of those uh, Bible texts that we talked about and see if there's more about water that you want to learn about. Thanks for joining us at Zion Lutheran Church.